It's all about the pasta bake with a cheesy butternut squash sauce. It's a mouthful, but it's totally delicious and it's something you're gonna wanna make because we are gonna take squash, blend it, we're gonna make a sauce out of it and then add cheese to it. We're gonna put it together with our pasta, bake it with breadcrumbs on top. It's the mac and cheese you've been waiting for. It's the hug you want this fall, so let's make some. Today's all about a pasta bake, which we love in the fall. We're getting into comfort food season, but this one has, that's right, it's gonna be a little bit unique with a cheesy butternut squash sauce. Yeah, I know it's a mouthful, but it really is delicious. And yes, it cuts the cheese down, but it also umps the flavor. Yes, it umps the nutrition and just ups it a little bit, but it really does add a complexity to it that I really like. And guess what? Usually kids love this too. Now I'm not gonna say my picky niece, Carson, you know who you are, is gonna love this, but I'm still gonna make her try it. So what we're gonna start with is just getting a few aromatics going so we can flavor that sauce. So I have some onion that I'm finishing chopping up and you can see I'm just doing it into a nice dice. Now, to get this to be a sauce, we're obviously gonna have to cook that squash and then puree it. So beforehand, what I'm gonna do is get some aromatics going so it has a lot of beautiful flavor. So I have some butter that's been melting, and then I'm gonna just take all of my onion here, and we're gonna put it right into the butter. Now, you could use oil. The reason we're using butter is it has flavor, and we like flavor. So we're gonna put this right into the butter, which is just gonna be a beautiful aroma, and we're gonna add to that some salt because when you salt onion early on, it draws out some of its moisture, so it cooks a little bit quicker, but it makes sure it's well seasoned too. So as that's slowly starting just to cook, starting to just kind of turn translucent, we can come back and talk about squash. So I'm using butternut just because it's easy to peel. Usually I leave the peel on. If I roast squash and eat it, I don't peel it. But in this case, the texture is gonna be best blended for a more smooth, cheesy sauce once you actually take the peel off. So to do that, I've broken it down, taking the seeds off, and you can see I'm just giving it a nice, fine dice. Now, the only reason I'm cutting it in small pieces is just so it cooks a little bit quicker. The smaller the pieces, the quicker it's gonna cook. So what we're doing is we're just chopping it down, dicing it up, see how perfect this is, and then putting it right into our bowl, and this is all going to cook once the onion and the garlic is done. That onion is just turning translucent, it's starting to soften. We don't wanna get color on it, so what we're gonna do at this point is just add our garlic. So the reason we don't add the garlic in the beginning, it can turn bitter, it can get a little bit too done and almost burnt when you cook it too long. So all I wanna do is like instantly, I'm warming that garlic through, I'm starting to smell it, it's fragrant. We need 30 seconds to a minute is all on that garlic to move on. So now that garlic is in there, we can add in some chicken stock. So you could use just a vegetable stock too. And what this is gonna do is be the medium to actually cook the butternut squash in. So I'm gonna put this right in here. And by the way, we're gonna finish everything in this pan. That's what I like about this. We'll go into the oven in this to get a little bit of brown on top. So we have all this cubed squash. As you can see, this is already coming to a simmer. So we're gonna put this right in and we're just gonna let this cook. So this is gonna cook until it's tender, which takes a little bit. So we're gonna cover it so it all gets trapped in there and cooks quicker, and then we can cook the pasta. Our squash is tender, so what I'm gonna start by doing, because the next steps now are pretty quick and simple, we're gonna start by cooking our pasta, which yes, I bought the little, I fell prey to the cute little pumpkin-shaped pasta. You can do any pasta. You could do you know, a rotini, you could do an elbow macaroni, make it kind of simple, whatever you want. So I am gonna salt my pasta water, just make sure it's well seasoned, just like you always would. And then I'm gonna put in this and let that just cook away. So while that's going, you can see right over here beside it, we have, yeah, it doesn't look that great, does it? It's pieces of not cheese, but in fact, butternut squash that are tender. So when you wanna check if they're tender, you can just eat one. You can take a fork, make sure they mash, kind of whatever works for you. But what we wanna do now is we're gonna blend it so it becomes more of a sauce. So you can tip it over to the side if you want and just start ladling it into your countertop blender. The reason in this case I'm not using my immersion blender, which you know I do love, I don't wanna scratch the bottom of my enamel cast iron pan. So for this case, I'm putting it into a blender, but also this does get it even more smooth, which in this case, you want it to be silky smooth. With it all in there, I do wanna add in some milk. So I'm using whole milk because it adds a little bit more richness. And at first it's gonna seem like a thin sauce, but we have cheese to add to it. So we're gonna pop the top on, but what you wanna make sure anytime you blend anything hot, leave that vent hole open. That's gonna make sure it allows the steam to escape so it doesn't create pressure, build up, and push off the lid. You don't want that. So we'll start on low and then just go until it's smooth. Once it's completely smooth, which really doesn't take that long, 
you can just take it off and you have this silky beautiful beginning of the sauce i mean look at this look at the texture it's so silky and beautiful so we put it right in there and you can see we're just going to add every last drop so at this point we seasoned only at first a little bit the onion you need to make sure you season it well it needs some salt and it definitely does it's a lot of squash in there and some black pepper i think black pepper is essential if you don't like it you can leave it out but now what we have is some good cheddar cheese now i like a strong cheddar i like the flavor you can really do any cheese in this case i like the cheddar so really instead of making a thickened sauce with a flour base that begins when you make a roux and you have to wait until it thickens add a lot more milk or cream get a lot more cheese in there this is balanced. So you're getting to me more flavor coming through, which I really like. So what we're gonna do is stir this. I'm just gonna take it here over to the stove, let it be on the lowest setting just to keep it warm and let that cheese melt. And then once that pasta is done, we can just pour it right in here. I'm bringing over the pasta that I just drained. And you can see here that we have such a silky sauce. Now at first it looks really you know, thin, but what we are gonna do is we cook the pasta al dente. Always remember that, that's super important. If you don't cook it al dente, that's no bueno because you want it to start soaking in as it finishes in the oven, all that cheese, which it's gonna do, and the butternut squash. So it becomes this one bake, which is what you want. So you can see I'm just folding it together very gently. And then what we have beside me is a couple more things that just, this just rounds it out into that homey deliciousness that we want. Let's be honest, it's gilding the lily. It's going one step that we don't need to go, but we're going to because it's good and we're worth it. That's all that matters. So what I have here is a little bit of melted butter. We're gonna add in some breadcrumbs. So these are fresh breadcrumbs because I think they work best when you're going on top of something. And then right here, some Parmesan cheese, which is gonna get kind of that more like seasoned flavor that you want, that parmy flavor that just, it really ups it and finishes it off. Yes, it makes it a little bit more of an adult mac and cheese type of dish, but we need that once in a while. So I'm just tossing that together to make sure we get those breadcrumbs coated in that buttery mixture and we really get it mixed in with that Parmesan, which believe me, you want, which I knew I like to do it sometimes, I'm afraid my bowl's gonna be too small and not mix easily, but that does. So once it's all tossed together, we can just put it right on top, which is just going to finish it off and get toasty in the oven. So we want it just to get bubbling throughout to make sure everything's heated, to finish that pasta cooking so it actually soaks in the sauce, becomes molten lava, but also so good where we always wanna burn our tongue because we can't wait. Get those crumbs all around. And now we can just pop it in Soon, we're gonna eat and be really happy. I pulled it out of the oven. It was bubbling all throughout, really hot. You can see it started getting toasted on top of those breadcrumbs. So I let it sit and rest for a few minutes just because for the better of your mouth, you really want to. But this case, it's now just a casserole you can eat from. So you can see how, do you remember when we put it together? It seemed like such a thin soup-like sauce. Look, it's not. It's like macaroni and cheese. Is that not beautiful? It thickens up because we cook those noodles al dente, which is what you want. And then they actually finish cooking in the oven with that sauce. So they actually get to soak it in, which is the point of cooking al dente. Mm. It's homey, it's cozy. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I did not grow up with boxed mac and cheese. Whether that was a privilege, an honor, whatever it was, at the time I felt like it was a curse because my mom would not buy it. This is a really good homemade mac and cheese. If you're used to the box mixes, it's not gonna have that fake cheese flavor. But whatever cheese you use, it has that delicious cheddar flavor for me. And it's mixed with that sweetness of that garlicky onion sauce we made with the butternut squash. That is the best part. And it becomes, you honestly wouldn't know that's in there, but I don't try to hide vegetables. I want people to know it's in there. That's delicious. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you get excited to make something different. It takes a couple extra steps, cooking the pasta separate, cooking that squash, then blending it. But it's fun to use the bounty of what's in season, and that is squash. That is the beauty of the harvest coming out of the gardens, going to your farmer's market, going to your local grocer, and finding what's in season. Use it to the fullest and enjoy it. So share this recipe around so other people can do it too and enjoy something maybe new. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe. All my other recipes, they're on there, so you can enjoy each season with the foods that we can find.